Hey, black women. Hey, you're at work and you're alone in a room. Who would you rather walk in right now? You don't know what it is, a white man or a white woman. You're in a conference room alone. You have to be with one or the other. Which one is it going to be? Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In case you're new here, my name is Maren and I'm Maureen. So today we're going to be reacting to a TikTok creator who posed a question to her female audience, specifically her black female audience. And she asked them, if you are in a room, in a conference room at work, who would you rather encounter right a white male or a white female right now guys we have had a lot of story about corporate america and i feel like this question is really really important especially to create that awareness and educate the others who might not be aware of this so we want you to really listen to the video we are going to be playing you and let us know what you think about it let's watch and then we'll come back and talk about it you don't know what it is a white man or a white woman I'm not going to generalize because not everyone is the same and I wouldn't want someone to generalize and put me in a box that I don't belong. But one of my most traumatic experiences at work happened under a white supervisor, a white woman supervisor. And I'm not saying traumatic, like I'm not exaggerating. I could not believe the belittling the microaggression, just the way that I was treated overall in academia. To the point that I'm trying still to fight the system, even though I don't work there anymore. As someone who has gone through a lot of struggles in life as a Black Latina, as it relates to having access and opportunities to spaces where people don't look like me, being homeless, trying to move up the ladder, getting a doctoral degree because that's what society tells us to do. That's what she told me to do, to be able to move up the ladder in academia. And then blatantly told me that I don't belong in those spaces because of the way that I look. And other things that are just so traumatic to recount. So there was a really interesting video made by White Woman Whisperer. I tried to stitch it and the audio didn't record, so I'm gonna to try to record it again here tag her below because you should go watch her video, but she basically poses the question or opens up this discussion, this bear versus man discussion to black women in asking, okay, if you're in an office, who would you rather walk in a white man or a white woman? And they, she said that the collective answer would be a white man. And a lot of women are getting offended. A lot of white women are getting offended because they're like, oh my gosh, what a man could do to you is so much worse than a woman. Like this is, this is divisive, but like, you're not getting it. The reason why black women would choose a white man over a white woman is for the same reason that women as a collective, especially white women, would choose the bear over the man. It is the danger you know versus the danger you don't. And like historically, the under the surface racism that white women have for black women has caused death and destruction and is absolutely a humongous danger. Because black women know, like in our society, that a white woman's accounting of things will always be taken more seriously than a black woman's. So she has to have like a distance because of personal safety. Now, I've seen this play out in my real life. I live in the South. I go to a lot of like influencer functions with like large groups of people. And I can see the difference between women of color who know me and women of color who don't and how they interact with me and like the guard that they have up. And that's not offensive to me because it's common sense. I absolutely expect them to be apprehensive of a white woman in the South because they don't know what they're getting. But just as the whole point of the bear versus man conversation is to make men understand that women are innately apprehensive and cautious around all men, the question that white woman whisperer was posing is to make white women understand the cautiousness that black women have around white women. That sort of like being scared of me before I give them a reason not to is not offensive to me because it's absolutely my responsibility to prove to these women that I am a safe person, not the other way around. You cannot like bully someone into trusting you with their personal safety. A woman goes into a conference room by herself, minding her business, but she has to choose who comes into that room with her when she's alone a white woman or a white man. And people in her comments, this creator's comments, were so surprised to find that black women would prefer it to be a white man. So why? 
Yeah, so people are saying, well, wait, I'm a white woman and I'm an ally. and I'd never attack a black woman. I would never SA a black woman. I would never, you know, fight a black woman. It's not physical safety. It's not physical harm that we're concerned about. And I know that that's what white women are always concerned about for a very good reason when it comes to men. We still have concerns about our physical safety, but I'm much more concerned about racism in that situation. Yeah, because when it comes to a white man, his racism is much more blatant. It's much more obvious. When that white man comes into the conference room, if he has a problem, it's very clear in his eye contact, it's very clear in his tone, in his body language, in his lack of eye contact. I know what I'm dealing with right away. And I'm like, boom, I know who you are. With a white woman, it's much more insidious. I might not find out for years that this white woman has a problem with black people. So working in DEI, I have to deal with microaggressions all the time. And it just happens, right? But 80% of the time, I would say the, perpetra the perpetrator in my experience is a white woman, which is like, it is what it is. Everyone has committed a, a microaggression at some point in their life. But it's the way that that gets handled. When I call in a white man for a microaggression, he's either going to accept my advice and move on, grow, or I'm gonna have to escalate it and pass the baton on over to HR. With a white woman, I'm gonna have to deal with a different level of defensiveness. Not all the time, but a good portion of the time, I have to deal with white tears. I have to deal with centering. I have to deal with virtue signaling. I have to deal with other things that can be very, in, very, very problematic that's very sneaky to get me out of my role. I have had this experience. I have had so many conversations with black women who've not only had to leave their job, get fired from their jobs for reasons they shouldn't have, but I have talked to black women who've had to leave their industry because of the experience that they've had with white women who were racist. I know this has been a conversation, but I decided to go back and watch the original video that's caused a lot of this conversation. And I just am, it just blows my mind that that video and the way that this content creator broached a valid question that black women are asking <laughs> has been in reinterpreted. I wouldn't even say misinterpreted. I don't even know what to say. Like that, that would be even seen as aggressive. Asking people to sit in a hut of humility is being responded to with a level of violence online explains exactly why she was asking that question. A lot of the consensus is that we would rather be in a room with a white man. And it's because you know white men are more blatant, just like racism in the South is like less tricky than racism in the North. They still, it's still racism. And so for me, I've worked in, y'all up here, I've worked in fashion um, for 12 years. I went to school with all white women after uh, for in college, um, and I grew up in an all black neighborhood, so that was a huge culture shock. Um, but I will say that I agree, and I have I have best friends that are white. I have, you know, coworkers that I taught. I learned so much from so many people who I who I very deeply and intimately appreciate. However, there are so many, even the most people with the well intentions, have so many blind spots, and. I just think I had to come to the conclusion that I just don't trust white women unless they earn my trust. And I feel like I'm the opposite with black women. Like I'm like, I, most people, you know, like I'm a very trusting person. Maybe that's my naivete. Maybe that's my ADHD. But with white women, there's always a bit of a. And when I look back at my career and who is who has fucked with me the most, it could just be proximity. But um is white women or is people who um, align with whiteness? Um, my first boss, but you know, she, it was a different time. I forgive her, I guess. I don't know, but um, <laughs> yeah, so. Now, when I heard that, I thought that really sucks. I can definitely see how that can be a problem because I actually listen to and respect people who have different lived experiences than I do and have a better understanding about the types of systemic oppression that they live under than I do because I don't experience. 
And rather than arguing with that person who has a much better understanding about the types of danger they're in based on lived experience about why I'm one of the good ones and not everyone is like that, I just shut up and listen and learn and don't ask that person for emotional labor to teach me. I, I look at the information that's already out there and take that initiative upon myself because I want people to feel safe around me because I care about others. And I don't tell that person or anyone else who is in that position that, well, I'm one of the good ones. I'll defend you. I will just let my actions speak for themselves. It's actually that easy. You can just be respectful and uh, listen to people and believe them when they talk about systems of oppression that they live in that you don't. And it actually won't make you explode to say, wow, I guess I could inadvertently be a part of the problem and I really need to make sure that I take steps so I don't continue to cause this problem that I say I don't want to be a part of. And what we sure as shit don't do, especially as white women, is explain in gruesome detail that is weirdly thought out all of the fantasies that we have about people who deny us access to them because they're frightened because of systemic oppression and what the other might do to harm them just because they said they wouldn't pick us to be alone in a room with them. I can understand that Whatever answer somebody who's lived through systemic racial oppression chooses in that scenario, even if I am among the group of people, they're like, yeah, I don't want to be in a room with you. I can understand they're not talking about me specifically, but people like me are very much a part of the problem. And if I want that to not be a problem anymore, I need to take the initiative to confront the people who are problematic with this behavior. So guys, welcome back. Um... I'm sure you have an opinion after watching the strings of video the strings of video we just played you and one thing I have to say is that I really understand these women I've never been in that situation where the which they have been that forced them right now if they were asked if they had to choose that makes them want to choose the male over the women yeah you know? yeah and you know one of the women here one of the white women she actually put it in a simple way for all of us to understand she equated this uh question question to would you rather choose a man or a bear kind of question and she said she understood why black women chose a white male over a white female uh, and in her own opinion she said she thinks black women chose a white man because they already know the danger they can expect with the white man but they didn't choose the white woman because they don't know the danger that the white woman uh, comes with you know right. because white women are timid in some of their opinions they're timid but they don't really show you or sometimes they do they have a micro aggression towards black women especially in uh work areas right and you know the most dangerous thing about this is that we don't mean to offend to offend anybody but it's known that um even in law enforcement you know when something happens even in a domestic kind of issue situation the woman is more likely to be believed above the male right, right. so to bring that into the topic we are talking about imagine a woman especially her being white in a corporate uh, kind of environment a, a woman has a false encounter with a black woman and that white woman happens to say that the black woman did x and and, and y you know yeah the, she's the, most she, most mm -hmm. likely to lose her job and also if you see at uh, the videos of uh currents and kens that usually call police on black people mm -hmm. most of them are usually actually white women you know mm -hmm. who feel very threatened by black people to be quite honest i don't know why but most of them usually just call police even on kids mm -hmm. black kids so guys when this question was posed that would you rather be met with a white male or a white female in a corporate room personally i'm, I'm i live in africa so I'm, i don't walk into these kinds of situations but i can only imagine for women of um african-american people to choose the white man over the white woman i can only imagine the really the kind of struggles they have to go through every day there's a video we talked about um if you've not watched it you can go back to watch it for reference where white women were admitting to themselves why they're jealous of black women and they really gave a good explanation about white supremacy and they talked about you know the the center of attention kind of syndrome they are used to being the center of uh, attention they are used to being the main characters so when you find a black woman excelling in at work even in that video we got comments of uh, black american women saying how much they've been sabotaged at work because uh, their female uh, superiors who happened to be white you know didn't feel like you know 
it was okay for them to excel and they're black yeah and then you know when this video was trending on tiktok uh, most of white women they really couldn't understand why black women chose white men um being that black women are in danger of being you know essayed yeah. by white male so yeah. why would they choose white male it's like choosing um uh, sa of uh, choosing uh, white females who don't pose the same risk as white men and as one of the white women in this very clip has said that women black women really choose white men because they already know all these things could happen but it is the fear of the unknown because the white woman's intentions most of the times are not uh known but are felt by black women mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so what do you guys think about this um topic do you think that women who choose the white man are justified for doing so and if you're a black woman on this platform just we'd like to, we'd hear, like from to hear from you. you would you choose a white male or a white female and if so why why why, why would you choose either of them mm -hmm. yeah and remember we're talking about corporate america, america. not in an, an other context, in an average and in an average situation just the corporate uh, environment or just work environment mm -hmm. but not outside of work environment mm -hmm. guys mm -hmm. so please please leave us a comment on what you think about this episode and uh Consider subscribing for those who've not. We'll see you on our next episode.